There's Armstead. Oh, and Armstead <laughs> drilled. What a big time hit that was by a guy who's been on the receiving end. Marcus Howell, one of the return men for the Stampeders. Well, he has taken some hits this year, Marcus Howell, and I'm sure he's gone into the coaches and said, look, why do you put me on some of those cover teams so I can go and be the hammer, not the nail all the time? And that time, Marcus Howell steps in and puts a big hit on Jason Armstead. That was a good one. Do have a penalty marker on the play. Major foul on this Surrey Rothness. Calgary number nine, 15-yard penalty, first down. Away from the tackle, John Cornish, who is the leading special team tackler for John Hupnagel, gets tagged with the roughness penalty. Well, you saw it just at the very top of your screen, that late hit after the play was over, Cornish. Kevin Glenn looking for his first completion, and he won't get this one away. Snowed under for the first sack of the game. And Mike Lapinjo's back. Mike Lapinjo had injured himself in a practice, was very disappointed because he was coming on before the injury. A nice bull rush there off the left side through Alexander Gauthier and Brendan Lebac. Fifth sack of the year for Lebinjo. Three and one game against Edmonton when he roughed up Ricky Ray in the Labor Day rematch. Loss of seven. Second and 17. And they run the hitch. Terrence Edwards not going anywhere as he's wrapped to track down Brandon Smith on the defensive play. Defense playing with some enthusiasm now after the touchdown. I want to show you some of the little things that a quarterback can do well when he's on top of his game. Henry Burris, watch him flip his hips here and turn his feet around to get in good throwing position. And then he takes that nice step and delivers a strike. He could have just kind of rolled out and just threw it like that in the first try, but he flipped his hips, showed great fundamentals when it comes to throwing the ball, got his shoulders in the right direction and threw a strike for a touchdown. All of a sudden now, a couple of plays and out here for the, for the Calgary Stampeders on defense after the Ralph touchdown. So now Marcus Howell drops back to be on the receiving end of first the punt and maybe one of those big special team hits and what does Cerna have for his third punt after kicks of 28 and 26 yards well you know Doug Barry said that he was actually looking forward to this game for Alexis Cerna this week because he thought that he had a bad practice week and, and what I mean by that is is for quite some time now, Alexis Cerna has practiced almost perfectly during the work week and then got into games and it's been somewhat of a 50-50 proposition, especially when it comes to field goals for him. And, and Doug Berry said this week, he said in the newspapers, you know, he didn't have a great week of practice, so I'm looking for big, big things from Alexis Cerna because of it. But he's got to start. Yeah, the reverse psychology hasn't worked yet. But he, yet. Hasn't, he hasn't tried a field goal yet. No. And they weren't trying to ice Alexis Cerna on this punt. There was some issue at the Calgary bench, and Andre Pru was over discussing it. There There's goes. a nice punt by Cerna. Here's Howell trying to get outside, and he'll be brought down. Greg Beerman takes him down. Well, we've already seen a glimpse of it. John Hupnago really likes the way his offense is gelling here in the second half of the season. Henry Burris is doing an excellent job of um, throwing the football, managing the game, and also uh, utilizing his other receivers. Uh, Nick Luce is having an outstanding year. Uh, um, Cope is having an, uh, a better second part of the season than he did in the first half. So uh, some great things are happening on the offense. And on that last touchdown drive, six plays, 48 yards. By the way, it was a 51-yard punt by Alexis Cernip. And there's Joffrey Reynolds on the ground again, who entered today's game 70 yards up in the rushing derby over West Cates, who will be back in action, we understand, for Saskatchewan tomorrow. Averages just shy of 80 yards a game versus the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in nine games in his career, an average of about 5.2 per carry. This is also a tough front seven to run against with Zeke Moreno in the middle and that front four with Doug Brown and Jerome Hayward in the middle of it. Three for Reynolds, second and seven. 
five receivers out and wide open Ryan Thelwell. And he has a first down grab at the 39. Just one catch in each of his last two starts. Heard John Hoffnagel talk about his quarterback and how composed he's been. A little bit of pressure on him there. Didn't bother him at all. He threw a nice strike out to Ryan Thelwell to the wide field. You can see the composure and again the good fundamentals from Burris as he steps into that throw. Has that lead shoulder pointing in the right direction. Another first down for Calgary. 11 for Thelwell. A first down. And now Burris looks the other way and there's an incompletion. As he and Thelwell not on the same page on that throw. You know, Glenn, I, I don't know if it's an issue because they played so well. It is interesting that Burris was only 50% last week. They win 42-5, so it's not really that important. But first five weeks of the year, he was over 65% each game. He has only been over 65% once since. So does that mean he's gone vertical more? He's gone vertical more, and, and you know what I like about his game? He, he didn't have the great percentage last week. He didn't throw an interception, though, and three touchdowns. And Parker down. Here. Here, and I think we'll see what this penalty is. But yeah. uh, you're hearing a lot of people say offside. Let's find out who it's going to be against Calgary. And well, that will negate the Nick Lewis catch. And put them in second in and real long, second and 15. Offside. Calgary number 85, five-yard penalty, still second down. But, you know, I think the point is that when, when John Huffnagel, you heard on that clip, say that Henry Burris has done a nice job throwing it. He's got weapons around him, but I, I, I love, again, what he said about managing the game. And, and Henry Burris, in his last seven, has thrown 16 touchdowns and just three interceptions. And that's managing the game properly. Screen and that one almost picked off. Cam Hall was there to blow the play up. You know what happened though, Chris, is that he looked for Joffrey Reynolds on the screen who went the opposite direction. Joffrey Reynolds is in the backfield right here. Now just take a look at Joffrey. Which way does he go? He comes out and then sneaks over to his right. There is and no can't get past the Newman. was in the minute where the ball landed. No infraction, third down. But you could see as he slid, slid to his right, Henry Burris turned around and looked, and all he saw was offensive lineman Jesse Newman, and you, you don't want to run the screen pass to Jesse Newman. No, no. That's not, that's not the design of the play. He threw that one in the ground. And because Joffrey Reynolds was close enough, he didn't get intentional grounding. Bombers needed that kind of stop. And Armstead awaits as Brooke Dales gets set to kick downfield. And Armstead fields it at his 30. And quickly outside and up the field. And down past Dales and finally dropped at the 36. Boy, he has been terrific in recent weeks. As Jason Armstead has certainly turned up the octane in the return game for the Bombers. It starts by Armstead having to get outside. He starts right there. Now, once he bounces outside, gets one block at the top of your screen, now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Armstead, the great returner against the punter, Burke Dales, and that's a mismatch, as you can see. And a touchdown, a, a touchdown saving tackle. Burke Dales is out there just collecting his gear. Olay. Yeah. 46-yard punt, 39 on the return. And now off the right side, Joe Smith dragging tacklers, including the middle linebacker, Salim Rashid. Boy, it's an awesome change of pace for the Bombers, who, as we mentioned earlier, have gone back to the running game. Prior to eight weeks ago, when Kevin Glenn was not calling the plays, the mix between pass and run was closer to 70-20. 78 20 79 20 21 in there now it's back to 60 40 pass run eight for smith second and two and back off the right side he kicks it outside markers all over the field as joe smith's down to the 11 and will this gain of close to 17 yards be taken back it will be it's a holding call against winnipeg 
holding. Winnipeg number 53, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Center Dominic Picard doesn't agree. See if he's, it's, it's interesting that a center right there, Dominic Picard, not often is it the center that gets called on the holding. Actually, you can see how he oh. missed Eddie Freeman and then grabbed him from behind by the shirt. Yes, the jersey pull, incriminating evidence, second and 12. And the screen is snuffed on a great play by Jawan Armour, collaring Joe Smith for a loss of two. Big play by Jawan Armour, who's, who's been Mr. Versatility when it comes to the linebacking core for the Calgary Stampeders. He's been able to play the middle, both weak or strong side linebacker. That time he lined up on the opposite side of the formation, but realized his man in the man-to-man -man defense was Joe Smith, and now he's got him eaten out of the palm of his hand. Is that what that meant? I'm not sure of that translation. <laughs> but I, I do know that this makes Alexis Cerna's first try of the game a long one. Jamie Stoddard will put it down at the 48. Cerna good on just two of his last eight. This would match a season best. And after a shaky punt start, he drills this one through. All right. Just like Doug Berry said, bad well, practice week, better games. Well, and, and it was about field goals, not punting. So that's maybe the old reverse psychology is working. <laughs> Didn't have a great week of practice in the field goal department, and he thought, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him in the game now because this may change things for him, and that's a great one to get some confidence. You know, I also like the fact that after the first punt, uh, a lot of players went down 